Welcome to today's webcast, Accelerating Value from Your Azure Data Lake in Four Hours. Before we get started today, I'd like to go through a few housekeeping items. First, if you experience any technical difficulties, you can reach out to us through the chat panel in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Please feel free to ask questions throughout today's webcast by typing them into the questions box. We will have a Q&A session at the end of today's event. If we don't get a chance to immediately answer your questions, we'll be sure to do so directly following today's webcast. This webcast is being recorded and will be available on demand. I would now like to introduce you to our first speaker today, Pete Lobser, Senior Vice President and Head of Global Marketing at Paxata, to begin today's presentation. Hi, Debbie. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, welcome, everybody, to our webcast. So this morning's conversation is, is really focused on how do we accelerate business value from the Azure data lake environment that you might have in, um, in, in your infrastructure. Um, this equally could apply to a data lake that's on premises. It could be a data lake that is on AWS, so it's very, very similar. Um, but we're going to focus for purposes of today. Um, we'll be uh, showing you in a demonstration of how we will do this on the Azure environment. Um, so over the next 30 minutes, I'm going to cover quite a bit of materials, and then Fakshi Rajan, who is Director of Product Management, will jump in to, um, to show us the demonstration of, um, of the product. Um, so let me quickly sort of um, just take one step back. Why is this important? Why are we talking about accelerating value from our data lake? Well, um, this slide is, is across all the industries. You can see is there's all these different kinds of initiatives and transformations that are taking place in your organization. Um, and data is at the heart of all of these things, whether it be in manufacturing to do on-demand production and leveraging the data flowing from sensors on product, on manufacturing lines, et cetera, whether it's in healthcare, connected devices, or virtual or augmented reality, or maybe in insurance, it's about personalized or usage-based um, insurance. The, the critical thing is data is at the heart of this revolution or transformation in all of our businesses. Now, the challenge, um, while that ambition is fantastic and we are implementing the data technologies and data-driven initiatives, by and large, these things aren't going smoothly. And so if you listen to what um, industry analysts like Gartner and Forrester say, um, the majority of these projects never go into production. And this slide gives you an illustration of what that landscape begins to look like. So if you focus on the bottom part of the, the slide, you can see all of the data sources that are, um, that are being consumed, that are being accessed, places where we will be running our data technologies. And it's no longer just enterprise applications and data on premises or in the cloud with AWS, or maybe it's a Salesforce or a Workday application. But increasingly, we are um, dealing with our IoT data. As we talked about those streams of data coming from devices, from, from uh, sensors that are all over the place. And then on the most right-hand side, um, you have the third-party data sources that people are consuming, purchasing your business ecosystem within which you are operating. Now, that's the data landscape. If you look at the top of the, the slide, it is the places and the, the styles of where we can use the data. Obviously, that's exploding. It's not just business intelligence and visualization, like, for instance, Power BI or Excel that you want to use, um, but it's for data science, and you want to be able to put this in a workbench. There are new applications being built. There are products that are needing to consume this information so that intelligent decisions can be made within those kinds of products. And so in the middle is really how we are provisioning it. And uh, we typically, if we would ask IT, they are struggling. They are dealing with silo technologies, There's the multi-cloud hybrid environment. They don't have enough skills resources as it is, but if you think about the introduction of the new technologies, I mean, they do brought um, a whole sort of a bundle, a bag full of new technologies, Nowadays, it's sensor flows and it's all the streaming applications and these kinds of things. And then, of course, we have governance and security and compliance issues that we need to deal with on, on that side. If you look at the business, the pace of business is only accelerating and increasing. We have different styles of asking questions. It's no longer let me predefine the question and keep on looking at that report week after week, month after month. We need to do exploratory, iterative styles of analytics um, 
and then we don't have enough resources in terms of the data scientists and the people that are on that side of the business. Um, so what it really boils down to, if you really net this out, is, is, is data preparation, provisioning data for all the places that we want to use that data is the problem. Because what is happening today as a result of the complication, the, the nature of the landscape is we spend 80% of our time on data preparation, um, and that's just not sustainable. I mean, it says IT doesn't have the people, they don't have business context, they don't have the tool set. Business people need to be empowered in this landscape. So this is one of the sort of major, major things that is holding us back from succeeding. So Paxana's point of view in terms of overcoming this is pretty straightforward. We believe that we need to find a way to empower business people, those people with the context of the data, the context of the business questions they want to ask, we need to get them to work and interact with the data and prepare it um, for their purposes. We cannot have this sort of back and forth between business and IT, business and IT, ask, ask again, and so on. So what it requires is a unified architecture that can span across all of your different initiatives that is designed for business users, for self-service. It obviously needs to be pretty visual, interactive, it needs to help you profile and understand the data, enrich and prepare it, and it will have to have some intelligence built in um, that can give you recommendations in terms of how you can improve your data, automate it, and then obviously it needs to run wherever we need it. It needs to run in a multi-cloud hybrid environment with built-in enterprise security governance um, and the things that we have. So the Paxata Adaptive Information Platform is that platform that we bring to our customers um, that provide you with an enterprise-grade self-service solution. And uh, um, it basically can serve up all of those use cases. It's one-click integrations, and uh, Pakshi will show you some of that into your BI environment or into your data science environment, or if you want to extract it into another application, you can use that. It's the only platform that has been designed and built on a big data environment, so it's built for scale. It's built for enterprise-grade performance. Um, most of our customers will, will, will implement our platform and then start off with probably analytical um, use cases, so serving this into an analytics environment. Usually the first step is going to be to bring data in from our big data environment. So how do we accelerate value from our data lakes? But as people are going more sophistication, you can see some of the, the kind of use cases we can spend a ton more time talking about this, but think about getting a single view of your customer, single view of your product, of an employee, without having to implement a massively complex MDM, Master Data Management Solution. Um, one of the other things that happen quite quickly, think about you creating your data lake in Azure, where do you get your data from? It says, we can help you migrate data from other environments into your data lake. And then um, you can ultimately begin to establish sort of a marketplace where you can actually exchange data with your partners and um, external parties in the environment. So with that, I'm going to start handing over to Pakshi to take us through how do we physically do this. But before we go there, is um, we have a poll, so we want to check um, quickly a couple of things. So. Um, the question for, uh, for this poll is basically, what are the main business drivers for your data lake? Um, so the options are, number one, is it self-service business intelligence? Um, are you deploying data science, or is it to support the sort of exploratory analytics? Maybe your marketing organization wants to do things like this, or are you in the fourth category with no real business use yet? So if you would like to uh, fill that in, I can read out the results in the next few seconds. Just a quick reminder, um, on the right-hand side, you will see um, there's a handout, um, which is the Paxada on Azure Solution Brief. You're welcome to download that and uh, have a, a look at that. Um, so the results are still coming in, but by the looks of it, it is we have a pretty even split between self-service BI, a little less of uh, people are doing data science and a lot of exploratory analytics. Um, and only about 10% of people have no business use um, yet within this environment. So um, keep on listening. Hopefully, we give you a few ideas. And with that, um, Pakshi, the floor is yours. Can we just get Pakshi to, um, I'm really to picking fine. it up? Yeah. Okay. 
So just a quick reminder is that if you have any questions, so is that there's a questions um, bar um, on the right hand side, so you are most welcome to get into the, your get your questions into us, and we will try to answer as many of them at the end of our session. And I can start talking about uh, with the slides right there before uh, we switch the control over to my laptop here for demo. Um, so what happens? Uh, by the way, I'm Pakshi, I'm product manager at Factata, and uh, and the way uh, most companies approach data lake is not very different from how they approach uh, data warehousing uh, a while ago, right? Uh, you land your data on some of the big data stores, um, uh, and, and then uh, on the right-hand side, you have all the, the, the analytical applications, visualization applications, sometimes it's an intelligent system, uh, and then there is a big chasm in between uh, the two. Right, the, the traditional way of spanning this chasm between uh, your your uh, raw data stores uh, and that, those are actually becoming bigger, so raw large data stores or big data stores uh, to your BI solutions. Um, many companies are using uh, traditional technologies like ETL, like coding, uh, and creating a curated store um, uh, and then populating things in uh, something like an Azure SQL data warehouse or. Uh, or some other intermediate store before you do uh, analysis and uh, your visualization solutions. Um, what Paxata offers is an alternative uh, where you can take a, uh, an average <coughs> Excel or Power BI user and uh, put them squarely in front of the data that's on your data lake store. So uh, your average BI user who's uh, bought into the self-service BI uh, mission uh, and you have taken on uh, self-service BI and exploratory analysis as the core mission for your data lake. Uh, we can put that user squarely uh, be able to interactively explore, browse uh, the data, profile the data, uh, prepare the data, and then consume it in the analytic solutions uh, without uh, uh, without much of uh, hand-holding from engineers, data engineers like SQL or programming or anything like that. That's what Paxara is here to do. Uh, and we do this the smart way, uh, like Pete said, we, uh, we use a scale out architecture uh, using Apache Spark, and um, and and uh, the whole thing is uh, automatically governed and uh, and self documenting. Right. Uh, so I uh, I picked this topic specifically uh, saying uh, how do we actually make uh, bring value in four hours to to enterprises that want value from data, uh, and I broke down the four hours uh, to to these four steps, right. Uh, the first one is to install Paxata from Azure Marketplace, which I will walk you through in a, in a few minutes. Um, the second one is to you know provision users in Paxata and uh, and create connectivity to the data sources, uh, and then uh, granting that uh, the data source access to your analyst type user, uh, and then inviting an analyst user to log in and um, and and then uh, ask them to prepare the data and then consume it in their BI tool. Um, obviously, this is four-hour uh, step. I'm going to uh, do the Julia Child approach uh, to, uh, to to present something uh, in, a, in a prepared state so that I could uh, squeeze this all in in eight minutes. So let's get started with the demo. The the first thing I want to show you is uh, I want to start with uh, Azure Marketplace. Uh, so this is uh, you know those of you who are familiar with Azure Marketplace, you might already know that you can click on the create a resource and spin anything that's already offered in the marketplace. Uh, and uh, I already clicked on the creator resource. And you type search for Paxata, you'll see the self-service data preparation application from Paxata. You click on create, and then fill the, the four steps that comes as part of the marketplace, uh, and uh, three steps, much easier. And then uh, you will get Paxata in about uh, half an hour or so, right? So that's your, that's your, uh, the first, the, the first one hour of uh, your, uh, your, your uh, four hours spent. Uh, once you have installed Paxata, uh, you will get uh, essentially a HD inside Spark cluster, uh, and uh, it would look like this. It's not that scary. It, it looks scary in the beginning, but it's not. Go to the overview and then click on Applications, um, and then you should see uh, Paxata installed right there. Uh, and you just click on the portal link, and uh, and that should open up Paxata for you. Uh, and in the process that uh, you use to get here, uh, you would have an email with some uh, tutorial videos and uh, and how to provision users, et cetera. So everything pretty much I'm going to walk through in the next step, you would have it in a video form available to you by email, uh, so that it'll, it'll handhold you how to you know, how to take the next steps. Um, so the first thing I want to do here, uh, now that I'm in Paxara, is I want to provision a, a user, an analyst user. Um, so here I want to go into user screen. 
uh, and then create a user uh, for uh, my analyst. And I'm going to call the analyst Debbie. She's sitting right across me. I hope this makes her nervous. And uh, I'm going to give a pack, uh, password that uh, for the user. And I'm going to give uh, Debbie uh, a power user automation uh, capability um, and then save that. Right? So I have provisioned the user right now. The next thing I would do is I would create uh, some data sources in Paxata. Uh, Paxata comes built in with a variety of connectors uh, for a lot of data sources. Uh, I'm going to uh, pick, sh just show you how, uh, how you create a data lake store connection. Uh, so select a connector, give it a name, uh, add the URL for your data source. Uh, and then uh, you, most of you who have used uh, Azure Data Lake Store know that you have to create an Active Directory uh, application ID uh, and an access key for authentication. Uh, you put that in, add the group data source, and then make sure that they can read, update, and delete. Uh, and then voila, you have you, know, you have enabled uh, you know Debbie. Uh, the next thing you would have to do is go go to a group and then uh, add Debbie to this group. That's that's pretty much all you would have to do, right? Uh, so grant uh, access to that group and then uh, add Debbie to the group and then so your analysts now can access your data source um, uh, and then uh, they can be on their way uh, getting into data prep, right? So now we are in the step three of the four-hour program. Um, so what I want to do is uh, quickly introduce the remaining areas of Paxata. Paxata has three uh, major areas besides the admin that we just saw. Uh, the first thing is the data library. That's the place where you know, if you upload a data set, it gets curated there automatically. Um, or you could, uh, you know, when, when you prepare a clean data set, that gets published and, uh, and, and, and curated in the data library. Uh, this is mounted on an Azure Blob or ADLS bucket uh, uh, container. And then uh, Paxata projects are the place where you transform data. Uh, and uh, I'm going to walk you through that as well. And if the user likes, the analyst likes the, the, the data that they brought in and the, the transformations they did, they could do self-service automation without having to worry about an external scheduler or orchestrator, uh, do all that from the user interface of Paxata. So that's the breakdown of what we have in the user interface. So first thing I want to go through, go over is uh, walk through how uh, an average analyst can bring in data that is on their data lake store, right? Um, so if I click import here and, um, and uh, click on data lakes, the, the data sources here, um, I see a variety of data source that I've been given access to, right? Uh, and this again is all governed and curated uh, data source access. So as an admin, you could you could choose who gets access to what, uh, and you could also make sure that uh, you know as you're provisioning these things uh, that you could impersonate so that you know one person cannot see data through Paxata that they otherwise would not be able to see in a data source. Um, so you have a lot of governance framework uh, tied behind this, but. From an end user point of view, they should be able to browse the data that they're allowed to browse, just like the way they would browse on their laptops. So they should not have to remember connection strings and and uh, and, and application IDs and whatnot, right? So it's all uh, really uh, up level on uh, multiple levels, so that you come in, you just click the data source, and uh, and essentially you just get uh, uh, the the folders underneath it, just like the way you would uh, browse your laptop, and that's that goes same for any uh, any location. So let's say I like this data, uh, or at least maybe I want to explore this data. I could just click here and pre get a preview of this data. And uh, if I like that, and of course I can interactively parse uh, the data as well. Uh, but if I like this data, all I have to do is just say finish, and uh, voila, I have uh, brought in data from my Azure uh, uh, Data Lake Store into Paxara. Uh, and that was all visual uh, and almost like uh, Windows Explorer or Mac Finder type experience to to bring in data into Paxata. Um, now I uh, I went through uh, or I glossed over a lot of capabilities in the screen. Um, if you if you go back here, I just want to touch base a few things here. There's wildcard search uh, here. There's globbing built in, uh, which means that if you have landing um, a lot of IoT type small JSON files, you can actually bring them all into a single data set automatically. Um, there's automatic file type detection, automatic uh, compression detection, uh, and, and you name it. I mean, this is pretty much the, 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 the most refined uh, interface you will see for ingesting data into, uh, into a solution uh, where the analyst may not even have to know what is behind the data, and they could just bring it in and then, and then explore what it is. Um, so I want to get out of this uh, mode and then show how I can now transform this data. Now that I have the data in Paxata, how do I transform this in uh, in Paxata? 
So I'm, for that, I'm going to go into projects and uh, I'm going to start a brand new project. I'm going to call it marketing campaign analysis. And for this, I'm going to bring in a data set that uh, I have downloaded from my uh, my server log. And uh, and this data is um, is uh, essentially the data that people have voluntarily filled in on my website to download, you know, uh, collateral, white paper, uh, things like that. Uh, and, and most of you who work in marketing, and I have two of them working in the same room as me right now, uh, they know that this data is never, never clean. It's, it's usually, this is, you know, people voluntarily disclosing data to download something. They're often on the rush to down, get somewhere else to do something else. And so the data is always not good. So what I do as an analyst, I come in, I turn on uh, pattern highlighting. Um, and to give me an give me an idea of what is going on with this data, just to visually scan uh, and get an idea of what's going on. So a pattern highlighting highlights data that has uh, similar values with same color. Um, so, for example, if I like if I see uh, Owen Donovan here, uh, three different rows, um, I expect the same colors to spread throughout my horizontal line. Uh, so, I, for example, help desk, uh, help desk technician, help desk tech. Uh, well, I'm sure Avan was in a rush, so he put that name in there, uh, and that's okay. Uh, the position doesn't really matter from analysis as much, but company does, because I want to know uh, how you know whether this is a single prospect or multiple prospect, uh, and the company column is critical for me, and I can see that that column is not really extremely populated. Um, and uh, and what I want to do is I want to just see how bad is this column of data, uh, and, and for that, uh, Paxata has this thing called filter graphs. And uh, what filter grams is, is basically it's a, it's a histogram that allows you to filter. It shows you the distribution of data, but you can click on it and uh, you can select multiple values. Like, you know, JC Penny, for example, is spelled in two different ways. Uh, it's obviously not good, bad data quality. There's 6,794 unique values here. Um, I want to see uh, if I can clean this up, right? Now, in, if you are used to uh, cleaning this up in Excel or, or, or let's say in, you know, even in Power Query, for example, uh, you would you would probably do uh, search and replace, right? And, and that's fine. That 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 works okay if you know pretty much every single way in which the data is messed up. Uh, you know, you could you could you could iterate through the finite list or actually a small list of data, uh, the the variance, and then do a search and replace. Um, or you could actually, you know, if you can document every way in which things are wrong, you could also give it to a, a programmer and say, can you just, you know, replace them for me? Uh, but what if you don't even know how bad the data is? Like you don't even know all the variations of it, right? And that's where uh, the power of algorithms come into picture. In Paxata, what I would do is I would do something called cluster and edit. Uh, and what that does is it actually brings together uh, values that uh, has the same hash into a into a single uh, you know into a single group. Uh, so, for example, in this case, I'm using an algorithm called Metaphone, which is like a original SoundX algorithm. Uh, anything that sounds similar will uh, will will be clustered together. So here, JC Penny with a space without a space, all that is actually clustered together. Uh, McDonald's is spelled in multiple ways. Nordstrom, of course. Uh, so I'm going to uh, you know uh, select this uh, cluster automatically button. Uh, what that does is it actually clusters all the values that are similar into into a, into the into one group, um, and I can uh, I have taken one pass at cleaning this data, and you can see that Lockheed Martin Inc. and uh, Lockheed Martin Inc. with a dot they became one value. Uh, there's still a Martian here uh, which we can clean up again using uh, something called a fingerprint algorithm. Uh, but I, my goal is not to show the full cleansing of this column that would take me maybe half a day, uh, but I want to show you that it's actually possible in in Paxata. Um, and then once I have uh, this cleaned up, maybe I can throw another filter gram here, and uh, you can see that the value here is 6,434 unique values in the column. Uh, if I go back to my step editor uh, and then go back to the previous step, uh, you can see 6,794. So in, in a matter of a few seconds, we took out about 400 unique values uh, out of this column. Uh, and uh, therein, uh, I want to show you the other feature, which is the step editor. Um, everything that you do in Paxata is self-documenting, uh, and it's also versioned. So every version of Paxata that you, uh, every time you modify the project, it gets uniquely versioned. So you can go back to the version that you used specifically, and then uh, trace through all the steps that you took to uh, uh, come to that uh, final answer set. Uh, and so everything is uh, governed with lineage. The next thing that I, I often do as a, as a as wearing a marketing hat is uh, I want to see you know how many of them are actually in my CRM. So I have all these people who are voluntarily given their name, downloaded something. I want to make sure that they are tracked in my lead system. Uh, so what I do here is I do a lookup, and I have a, a feed from my CRM which I'm going to pull. Uh, of course, we have uh, connectors to the systems as well. Um, so you select that, and then when you select uh, a CRM feed. 
um, Factata would automatically start to find, uh, you know, probable joint candidates between the two tables. Um, so I have a set of tables that I got from a web log and, uh, and, and set of columns that I got from my CRM. And Factata is recommending to me that email is the best way to join these two tables. As an analyst, I don't even have to know the schema or the column names uh, of these uh, of these tables. Uh, what is more interesting is the second the second uh, join recommendation where it's a fuzzy join uh, and also it's a composite join. So if you take the last name and put a comma and a space and then put the first name after that, that matches the full name of the second table uh, and so on. Um, and so it, you don't have to know how to bring this data in, uh, uh, how to join the two data sets together. Factsara will guide the analyst to, 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 to do this uh, step by step. Um, and uh, and this is you know what a lot of people call as data integration, uh, but except that you're doing data integration here without code, without SQL, without any uh, ninja skills. Uh, you just uh, you point, click, and then uh, you have data data integration done. So when when I brought in two data sets, Factsava added this new column called sources, uh, which means that where where, am I, where is my data coming from? Uh, and for here, I'm going to uh, uh, select do a filter on the sources. And uh, I see that there's about 10,000 rows for which I don't have CRM data. I'm going to select that, add a, add a lens, and publish that. I'm going to say call this missing from CRM and uh, save that. Uh, and then I'm going to publish from that lens. Uh, and now that is going to show up on my data library. Uh, this is the place where all the curated answers will show up. Uh, and as the last step, this is the last hour of the four hours, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Power BI. And I'm going to uh, bring in data from uh, Pactata. And here I can, um, you know, essentially put the Pactata URL, put my credentials, and uh, and start looking at uh, the data that I have published in Pactata. Um, I can uh, I can visualize this. Just click on it, uh, and here is the missing from CRM data that you can see there, the right next to it. Um, and so you can you can finish this whole journey end to end. Uh, you're provisioned Pactata. Uh, created an analyst user, gave them access to the data, the analyst user logged in and uh, prepared the data, I mean, brought in the data, prepared it, and then uh, and then they can pull it in Power BI and uh, and build the dashboards. So that is the full flow that I wanted to share with you. Uh, I'm going to pass the presentation back to Pete. If you have any questions, I'll be after the presentation available to, to take some calls. Pakshi, thank you so much. So. Um, Basically, what we um, what we have at the moment is that we would like to quickly just put a poll up. Um, there's another quick um, poll that we wanted to put in front of you guys, if you don't mind um, sharing some of your thoughts. So, um, just sort of a, a quick question: Do you currently have data like in development or in production? So, the first option is, is, is on premises in the cloud, or in a hybrid environment, or nothing at all in production. So, the choices are on prem in the cloud. Um, or in a hybrid environment. Um, a quick reminder, if you've got questions, please do pass them along in the questions um, frame on the right-hand side. Um, and I will momentarily begin to read out the results for, um, for everybody. Um, okay, so this is pretty awesome. Um, wow, okay, so from, from the results here, it looks like nobody has an environment on-premises only. About a third of um, the respondents say they've got um, cloud. 17% um, say they have um, a hybrid environment and about 50 say that they don't have anything in production um, or in development at this point in time. So lots and lots of opportunity for people to uh, to leverage some of the things that Pakshi shared with us. So with that, I will jump back quickly to the slide. Let me just quickly close out. Um, so, I mean, one one of the things that, um, that Baxada is very um, proud of is the customer list that we have accumulated. And you can see it as we've, uh, we've, we started our conversation about data transforming industries um, across the globe. And you can see it as that we've been working with leading organizations across the globe, across multiple industries, and we've been um, incredibly proud and incredibly um, fortunate to have um, the association with these companies, but also the partners that we have with the likes of Microsoft, Accenture, and many other organizations that you um, can see within our environment. Um, so one of the really cool things, hot of the press, um, yesterday um, Forrester published an updated way for their big data fabric platforms. And uh, Paxada is incredibly proud to have been included in the leaders 
um, group. Um, so really, really exciting time for us here at Backstart. It also follows on um, us being included in the leaders group for data preparation um, that was released last year. As I said, they're in the process of redoing this wave. So um, picking Faxada is um, a safe choice. I mean, we're the only leader in both of these squads. Um, and so with that, I would like to, um, again, encourage people, if there are any questions, please um, fill them in. On the right-hand side, please download the solutions brief. If you want to try what, uh, what Paksha has shown you, um, then guess what? This is very, very easy. If you go to the Azure Marketplace, search for Paxada, you'll be able to find um, our, um, our distribution there, our product there, and you will get a free trial for 30 days. Um, you can get office hours with, um, with uh, Paksha and the team personally. And again, there are more information on our alliance and relationship with Microsoft. So with that, I thank you very much. Um, okay, so it looks like there is a question. So just before we close it out. So the question is, and I'm gonna direct this um, to Pakshi. So how is the performance adjusted when you have millions of rows of data to transform and integrate? So your samples were pretty small. I mean, can I handle, uh, can I handle 10, 20 million? Yeah, this is, uh, this is, this is where uh, I think factor of architecture matters the most. Um, we uh, Paxata very early on when Spark was under development, we chose to uh, uh, co-create our solution on top of Spark, and uh, and we also had early Spark contributors in our team. Uh, and as a result of that, we are right now the only shop in town where uh, if you really want to interactively prepare data that's you know even 10 million or above, uh, we are the only shop in town. Um, we can uh, we have done interactive data prep at hundreds of millions of records. Uh, uh, by scaling out a Spark cluster slightly bigger, uh, and most of the Azure and uh, and uh, the, the cloud data lake uh, uh, hit the Spark clusters now support uh, auto scaling, uh, and so Paxata will be the only solution where you could actually do uh, the data prep interactively at scale. Good. Actually, that's um, that's about um, I think that's about the list at the moment. So um, if there are any questions um, we that we didn't get to, we will try to respond to you directly. Um, it's also got us to the end of our time, and so um, with that, I would like to thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Pakshi, for joining me on this webcast, and uh, please be on the lookout for an email from us where you will get additional information um, about the webcast. You can download and view this again at your leisure. Thank you very much.